ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله ان دي ذا موست تروث سبيتش ذا بوك اوف الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثه بدعه and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعه ضلاله and every innovation is misguided and leads astray وكل ضلاله في النار Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, أَحَسَبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَقُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَمُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Qur'an, what means do people think that they will be left alone, saying, I believe, and they're not going to be tried or be tested? This is a thought that many of the people have that I was created, I say I believe and this is sufficient for me to go to Jannah and to be successful. Life has tests and trials, fitan of all types that will fill the earth. As Allah said, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتُ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah, He is the one who created death and life so that He could test you to see which of you would be best in deeds. On the authority of Abu Amr, he's also called Abu Amr, Sufyan ibn Abdullah Thaqafi, radiallahu anhu, he said, Qultu, ya Rasulullah, qul li fil islami qawla, la as'alu an, anhu ahadan ghayrak. Qala, uh, qala, qul, amantu billah, thumma staqim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, tell me something about al Islam that I can ask you and nobody but you. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said to him, Say, I believe in Allah, and then istaqim, be steadfast upon this, meaning with actions, the actions of your limbs. Not just a statement, as we know, Iman is not just a belief in the heart or a statement on the tongue, but the limbs have to do the work. This will be spoken about soon, in this khutbah, but the istiqamah, it comes through your actions, through your deeds, through your ibadah, through your worship. This is what will protect the heart, and this is what will protect the soul. Allah, He said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah says, what means that Allah, He said, I, يعني Allah, did not create the jinn or the humans except that they would worship me. This was the purpose of our creation and our existence. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said that ibadah, worship, is obedience to Allah, following what was ordered by the messengers that Allah sent. And he said, al-ibadah is a comprehensive term for everything that Allah loves and everything Allah is pleased with. If it is something good, and Allah would love it, and He would be pleased with it, then this is all ibadah. Even if it's not prayer, or, or, or siyam, or fasting, or zakah, or charity, or hajj, these are all types of ibadah. Statements are ibadah. Actions can be ibadah. The outward, the inward, these can all be ibadah. 
When a man takes food to the wife, to the mouth of his wife, this is charity, this is ibadah. When the wife is cooking during Ramadan, while her husband may be reading the Qur'an and this and that, but she's busy with preparing the meals, this is ibadah. So ibadah is not just prayer and charity and the likes of these matters, it's everything that Allah would be pleased with and everything that Allah loves. This ibadah is the devotion of the heart with love along with humility. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بادروا بالأعمال فتنا قتع الليل المظلم يصبح المؤمن يصبح الرجل فيها مؤمنا ويمسي كافرا أو يمسي مؤمنا ويصبح كافرا يبيع دينه بعرض من الدنيا Brother Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in this hadith which is in Sahih Muslim he said hasten hurry up Never put off, do not delay al-a'mal, the acts of ibadah, the acts of worship. Before the appearance of the fitna, trials and tribulations like the darkest part of the night, in which a man, he will awaken a believer, but he will go to sleep a disbeliever. Or he will be a believer in the evening, but he will wake up in the morning a disbeliever, selling his deen, selling his religion for the exchange of a worldly gain. The darkest hour here, this is a metaphor for you to understand the times of fitna. Hurry up and do good deeds before these times of fitna consume you. In times of fitna, the people get lost. They get confused. They get disoriented. They get taken away by what they're caught up in and they forget Allah. And they can't tell guidance from this guidance. They can't tell the light from the darkness. They cannot tell the khair from what is dis- disapproved or disliked or what is harmful to you. They sell their deen for the dunya. To have more money, they'll sell their deen. To have more fame, they'll sell their deen. To have status, they'll sell their deen. And this is what we see in times of fitna. People leaving their, yani, their ibadah, their worship for the pleasures of this dunya. عن عبد الله عن أبي موسى رضي الله عنهما. They mentioned that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said إن بين يد الساعة لأياما ينزل فيها الجهل ويرفع فيها العلم ويكثر فيها الهرج والهرج القتل. رواه البخاري. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said here the establishment of the hour towards the end of time there will be days in which religious ignorance has been widespread. There's no doubt that we see that today. The abandonment of the Qur'an, the abandonment of the Sunnah, people doing things that are clearly have no, have no proof in the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And yet they'll be upon that way. Knowledge will be taken away, it will vanish. And we see this by, as we'll see in the next hadith, by the death of the ulama. And there will be much al-harj. And he said al-harj is killing. And what do we see in our world today? But every day you open the news, locally here, where things are quote-unquote advanced and all over the world, where there's murder, killing ruthlessly, without any care for the loss of human life that was innocent. عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن الله لا ينزع العلم انتزاعا ولكن ينتزعه منهم مع قبل العلماء بعلمهم فيبقى فيبقى ناس جهان يستف the Prophet ﷺ, he was heard to have said, Allah will not deprive knowledge after He has given it to you. And He will not take it away by lifting up the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the books like this. But it will be taken away through the death of the ulama. The religious learned people who referred back to the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the life of the Sahaba to take their deen from them. Then there will remain ignorant people. They'll be consulted. They'll give verdicts from their opinions using their quote-unquote intellect, not going back to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Or massaging the Qur'an and the Sunnah to suit something that will make them popular and famous. Whereby they will mislead others and they will go astray, and they will mislead others, and they will go astray as well. And this is clearly the time we're in, where people 
argue with things that you have clear evidence for in the Quran and the Sunnah saying, I don't think the Prophet ﷺ would have said that. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يتقارب الزمان وين وينقص العمل ويلقى الشح ويكثر الهرج قال وما الهرج قال القتل القتل The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said time will pass rapidly and we see that this was a foretelling of the day of judgment where السنة كالشهر والشهر كالجمعة والجمعة كاليوم واليوم كالساعة where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the approaching, approaching of the final hour the day of judgment it will come when the year feels like a month the month feels like a week the week feels like a day the day feels like an hour and many of us look and we say where did time go remembering the day our child was born and now they're 18 in the blink of an eye these are signs that the time is coming to an end. He said, time will pass rapidly, good deeds will decrease, miseryliness will be thrown into the hearts of the people, greed, everyone just being out for their own maslaha, only looking out for themselves. And the harj will increase. They asked him, what is harj? He said, it is killing, murdering. It is murdering and killing. And this is how he described it. And Ma'qil ibn Yasar, رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم العبادة في الهرج كالهجرة إلي Now focus on this The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said an authentic hadith عبادة and this is صحيح مسلم عبادة worship in times of fitna worship in times where you see murdering and killing being a common thing worship in these times is like you making hijra to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as if he was alive and you would leave everything you have just to go to him. The equating of this is to you worshipping Allah in these times of fitna. And now he said the intent of this harj is trials, the upheaval of the people's affairs. The reason for good reward is because there are most of the people will be unmindful, too busy to focus on doing good deeds not caring to do those good deeds, only in pursuit of happiness here, and neglecting their akhirah. So we see this nowadays even in the Muslim lands, the wars, the mass killings, Muslims getting busy in this, reading and watching and getting over the emotional, distracted from worshipping Allah, except for a few. And this isn't necessarily just at the end of time, because we still have many of the signs that haven't happened yet, but we can tell that it's approaching. One of the scholars, he said, who from the masses, even the qullab al even the students of knowledge, who from them will say, I see the people preoccupied and just watching the news and the news. And nowadays with social media, it's even worse. The electronic component has made it even worse. Because now you can lose hours just staring at it. Prayers will pass and you won't even know that the prayer time came in. You'll be like, did Medrib already pass? Because of just being glued to that electronic device. Who from the masses will say, I see the people being preoccupied with these matters, but I'm going to go busy myself with reading the Qur'an. Instead of busy myself with reading the newspapers or the magazines or TikTok, Instagram, the likes of that, that many people spend a lot of time in, I'm going to recite the Qur'an. Instead of busy myself with the audio and visual media, I'll pray that amount of time that people are listening and watching. No one will hasten towards this, except the individual who's granted success from Allah. Al-Qurtabi, he said, worship in the times of Harj is like migrating to the Prophet Sallallahu this hadith, he has preceded that this Harj is upheaval and confusion, fitan, killing the disarray of the people, so whoever adheres to worship at this time, and cuts off from the people, they have the reward of someone who made hijrah to the Prophet Sallallahu They have the reward of that person. So just as this is the case for the one who sought the protection in the Prophet ﷺ, the one who cuts off from the people and takes to worship, has escaped with their deen from the people and sought protection with Allah Azzawajal. So to escape from these fitan, to hold on to the Book of Allah, by holding on to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of His Messenger ﷺ, is what we need to be occupying ourselves with. 
to worship Allah with dalail, to worship Allah with the evidence and the proof, not out of ignorance, not with your intellect, not with your opinion, and definitely not with any bid'ah or innovation. So the focus is on worship, to be safe, to be secure during times of fit- fitna. Worship your Lord who created you and blessed you with many favors. To have this istiqama, he said the Prophet ﷺ, say I believe, so mustaqim, have istiqama, be firm and steadfast on this. Then you need to act, and you cannot act without knowledge. You cannot act without the knowledge. Seek knowledge sincerely, so you don't confuse good with evil. You don't confuse sunnah with bid'ah. You don't confuse truth with falsehood. You can only do this if you have ilm. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم طلب العلم فريدة على كل مسلم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the seeking of knowledge is a farida, an obligation upon every Muslim, male and female. Imam al Bukhari at the beginning of his Sahih, he began with saying al ilm قبل القول والعمل. Knowledge comes before speech and action. In Islam, al Islam, the one Allah chose for His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم to be delivered to the world. You cannot act unless you have a proof on how to act. You cannot say unless you have a proof of what you should say. This is the importance of ilm. Knowledge gives us signs of fitna. Why? Because the Prophet said, take for Dajjal. The Prophet said, this man will come to you. He will a'wad al-ain. He will be blind in one eye. He will have kafir or kaf ta'ala written between his eyes on his forehead. He will come to you trying to deceive you that he is God. And he will come and say, This is my Jannah, this is my hell, hellfire. But the Prophet said, Narahu Jannah wa Jannatuhu Nar. The fire that Jal shows you is really Jannah. And the Jannah that Jal, the Antichrist, shows you is really the hellfire. So if he gives you these and you're going to go into one, Lower your head, say Bismillah, and go into what Dajjal is showing you as fire because it will be cool, it will be Jannah. If you have knowledge, you're protecting yourself from fitna. And this is one of the greatest fitna, a Dajjal, the Antichrist. So you can protect yourself. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من خرج في طلب العلم فهو في سبيل الله حتى يرجع. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the hadith which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi. Whoever goes out on the path in search of knowledge is considered to be in a, in a way of struggle in the cause of Allah until he returns. And knowledge will guide you to what is best. كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أعلموا أن خير أعمالكم الصلاة The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said know that the best of your deeds is the prayer. Yet to many people they abandon the prayer but they'll focus on other things which are much less important or not as obligatory as the salah is as we discussed the past couple of weeks you have to have knowledge so you can prioritize do what is correct do what is best Abu Dabda he narrated from the Prophet how many times do we mention this hadith that the Prophet said there is nothing heavier on your scales than husn al good manners good character Yet you will see a person praying in the masjid every prayer, praying five prayers, praying the talawat, the extra sunan prayers, fasting every other day, making umrah every year, giving all this money in charity, yet his manners are horrid and horrendous and embarrassing. But if he had knowledge, he would realize he needs to fix his character and his manners with his family, with his brothers and sisters in Islam, with his neighbors, Neighbors with his colleagues, with the non-Muslims. Because it's the heaviest thing on your scale, Yom Al-Qiyamah. Alhamdulillah, tamla'u mizan. This phrase, Alhamdulillah, it fills your scales. So why don't we continue to praise Allah when we have what we call free time? Instead we'll put on the radio or the CD or the iPad or whatever. Alhamdulillah, a phrase so heavy will fill and make the scales heavy of good deeds. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah said, ask the people of knowledge when you do not know. Knowledge, if you get it, you arm yourself to protect yourself. Put yourself, your family in a secure position. يوم القيامة أقول قول هذا وصفر الله لي ولكم أدعو الله يغفر لكم ذنوبه
إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد عن معقل بن مصاب قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم العبادة في الهرج كالهجرة إلي رواه مسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said عبادة worship in times of fitna in times where you see killing and murdering becoming a norm that people can see it some laughing at it or mocking it right this عبادة in these times is like making a hijrah a migration to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم it's like getting the reward to that level from the text of the ibadah, we should remind ourselves with that are easy and simple to do. That we often neglect the Qur'an, reciting it. When you read the Qur'an, alif un harf, lam un harf, mim un harf, if you read those each harf, each letter, you get the reward of ten, ten hasanat. This book that we forget except in the month of Ramadan. The words and the speech of Allah, the final message to all of my, mankind, not just for the Arab. To all of mankind, the final message, reciting it is an act of ibadah, a protection in times of fitna, so resort to it. قال الله وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين ولا يزيل الظالمين إلا خسارة. Allah says what means that we send down from the Quran that which is a healing and a mercy to those who believe in Tawheed and act upon it. And it increases the volumoon, the politics and the wrongdoers in nothing but loss. Healing of the diseased heart. Strengthening yourself in times of fitness through the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, Allah says what means those who believe in the oneness of Allah and whose hearts find rest in the remembrance of Allah. Indeed in the remembrance of Allah will or do the hearts find rest. It's in the Qur'an. You have it with you. Now it's on your phone, so you can't say, I don't have wudu. You can even look at it there to recite it, to listen to it. The hearts will find rest through that, through the Qur'an. Al-Hassan al-Basri, he said, whoever wants to love Allah and his messenger, وسلم, he should read the book of Allah. We claim to love Allah and his messenger, وسلم, but we've abandoned the book of Allah. Dhikr, something very easy for us to do. At all times, you don't, know, you don't need to be in a state of wudu. You can do it while you're laying in your bed. You do it while you're driving in the car. It's not like you have to look at something. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu akbar. The likes of these matters. Allah said, فَإِذَا خُذِيَةِ الصَّلَاةِ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَبَتَهُوا مِنْ فَضِ اللَّهِ وَأَذْكُرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُطْبِحُونَ Allah says, Regarding Jum'ah, when the Jum'ah Salah is done, and you disperse through the land, and you're seeking the bounty and the provision of Allah by working, remember Allah much so that you may be successful. The heart that doesn't remember Allah is like a dead heart. It might beat, it might be pumping your blood and causing you to live. It's dead. It is dead. Allah says, Allah says, therefore remember me, praying, making dhikr, Glorifying me, extolling me, and I will remember you. Be grateful to me for my countless favors on you, and never be ungrateful to me. A man asked, O Messenger of Allah, وسلم, which of the legislative acts of Islam they have become too, Afwan, they've become too many for me? Give me something that I can stick to. Do ne- never let your tongue become dry from remembering Allah. Always keep it moist, meaning always keep the remembrance of Allah upon your tongue. Ad-du'a. Ad-du'a. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, قُلْ مَا يَعْبَأُ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْ لَا دُعَاءَكُمْ فَقَدْ أَتَذَّبْتُمْ فَسَوْفَ يَكُونُ لِزَامًا Allah says what means, say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the kafir, to the disbelievers, Allah is telling Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say to the kuffar, my Lord pays attention to you only because of your dua to him. So if Allah is paying attention to the kuffar only because the kafir might make dua to Allah, then what about the one who believes in Allah and only worships Allah and follows the messenger of sunnah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and prays his prayers and gives his zakat and fasts on Allah, what for that person? My Lord pays attention to you only because of your invocation to Him. 
But now you have indeed denied him, so the torment will be yours forever. The punishment of Jahannam. And Nu'man ibn Bashir, radiallahu anhu, قال, قال Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, الدعاء هو العبادة. Dua, making dua is worship. You can worship Allah. Laying in your bed, you can worship Allah. Driving in your car, you can worship Allah. When you're walking around the park, at all times. Then he recited, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ دْعُونِ يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنِ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدَخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Then he read the ayah from the Qur'an where Allah says what means call upon me and I will respond to you. Verily those who scorn my worship, they will be in the hellfire humiliated. Brothers, if you can move forward, barakallahu feekum, so that those coming in can pray to us before they sit down. Allah said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Allah says, what means, and when my slave asks you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi concerning me, then answer them, I am indeed near to them by his knowledge. I respond to the dua of the supplicant when he calls upon me. I don't need a mediator or an intercessor. So let them obey me and believe in me so that they may be led aright. So that they may be led aright. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in the Hadith Qudsi Abu Hurairah, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, إن الله عز وجل قال من عاد لي وليا فقد آذنته بالحرب وما تقرب إلي عبدي بشيء أحب إلي مما افترضته عليه وما تقرب إلي عبدي بالنوافل حتى أحبه فإذا أحببته كنت سمعه الذي يسمع به به وبصره الذي يبصر به ويده التي يبطش به ورجله التي يمشي بها عفوا ويده التي يبطش بها ورجله التي يمشي بها وإن سألني لعوذنه ولئن استعادني لعوذن لعوذنه رواه البخاري in this hadith قدسي the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Allah says whoever shows enmity to someone who is devoted to me I will be at war with him the one who shows enmity to the believer, Allah will be at war with that person. My servant draws not near to me with anything more love to me than the fara'id, the things I made obligatory upon them. And my servant continues to draw near to me with the nawafid, with the extra, the extra prayers, the extra charity, the extra fasting, and the likes of these matters until I love him. And when I love him, I'm the hearing with which he hears, the seeing with which he sees, the hand with which he strikes, the leg with which he walks. If he were to come to me, seeking anything from me, I would give it to him. And if he were to seek refuge with me, I would surely grant it to him. Acts of ibadah. This is what will get the Muslims to be victorious. The Muslims through these hard times and these challenges of fitna. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in these times of fitna, worship Allah as much as possible. Fear Him, have hope in Him, and He will grant you victory and relief. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, the deen, it is aided when the people, when it's put to the test. So do not be amazed, for this is the way of Ar-Rahman. This deen, and the Muslims who follow this deen, they will be aided by Allah, and never be shocked about that. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ النَّصْرِ مَعَ الصَّبْرِ وَأَنَّ الْفَرَجَ مَعَ الْكَلْبِ وَأَنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Allah said, Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, He said, and know that victory comes with patience and relief comes with affliction and hardship comes with ease. So do not despair and always have good thought and suspicion of your Lord because Allah is the only one capable of rescuing us from anything and everything. But our ibadah must be sincere to Him alone without any partners. Our ibadah must be put into place. We must worship our Lord the way He created us, uh, the, the, for the reason He created us. Yani, with that reason, to worship Him alone without any partners. So at these times, we're in a state of despair. And we see the killing and the murdering of innocent people, especially women and children, and innocent men. When we see injustice and disgusting oppression, unthinkable, unfathomable, unimaginable oppression, that the devil, the devils, and the cowards, and the fools, they try to justify, while taking no accountability for their evil actions, and having no remorse. 
making the lamest and stupidest excuses for their senseless and devilish satanic actions, just trying to exert power and authority over anyone and everything, even if it's injustice, even if it's through the way of injustice, even if it's through hate and greed. In these times, Allah is with the believer. So turn to Allah and worship, because it's like making hijrah to the Prophet ﷺ. Turn to Allah by reading the Qur'an. Turn to Allah by safeguarding your prayers. Turn to Allah by coming to the masajid for your salawat. Turn to Allah with patience. Turn to Allah with your dua. Turn to Allah by making zikr. Turn to Allah with charity. Turn to Allah with all types of worship. And you will find that the help of Allah is not just near, that it will come. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم الاموات انك انت سميع قيم مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على اعدائك واعداء الدين اللهم انصر اخواننا وفاتنا في فلسطين اللهم نفس قلوبهم وثبت اقدامهم اللهم ثبت اقدامهم اللهم ثبت اقدامهم وتقبل شهداءهم يا ارحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزه اما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين